Hi, it's Tim from oraclebase.com. In this video, we'll take a look at a simple Docker build for an Oracle 19C database on Oracle Linux 8. If you're new to Docker, there are links in the description box that will help you get started. We'll start off in GitHub where I keep my Docker files. We'll drill into the database and Oracle Linux 8.19. And this is a 19C build on Oracle Linux 8 Slim. So let's look at the Docker file. There's comments at the start that just show us how to build and run this. If we look at the main body, we can see that we're building this from Oracle Linux 8 Slim. We've got environment variables split into three sections. First, Environment variables I don't really expect to be changed. They're things like paths and the software. Then we have the environment variable that's going to hold the path. That has to be set using the Oracle Home, so we need a separate entry. We can't reference existing ones here. And then finally, the environment variables I do expect people to change. We would expect most databases to have different names and different pluggable database names, and certainly we'd expect the passwords to be different. These environment variables will be overwritten at runtime, so the fact they've got stupid values is fine. So we copy the software and scripts into position. And then we do a whole bunch of commands here. They're put together so we have a reduction in the number of layers produced. We have a run command where we create some groups and a user, we install the OS packages and then we sort out some paths. We switch across to the Oracle user and then we unzip the software into the Oracle home location and then remove the software. That's typical with Docker builds where you're trying to reduce the size of the image. Now in this run command we have to fake the operating system because Oracle 19C is not certified to run on Oracle Linux 8. Then we just do a silent install that will look familiar to any DBA out there. A slightly unusual thing we're doing here is I'm going to remove the Apex directory and then unzip the latest version of Apex software into it. Normally I wouldn't do this, I'd leave the contents of the Oracle home alone, but once again this is just me trying to reduce the size of the image, not having two copies of Apex. After the install is complete, we switch to the root user and run the root scripts as normal. Then we go back to the Oracle user and then we're going to use UO2 as a persistent volume and we expose the ports 1521 and 5500. We have a health check script that's going to run every five minutes and then we have the start script. So let's have a look at these scripts. First the health check, it's pretty simple. What we can see is we just use SQL plus to do a select from jewel of the word alive. If the return of that is alive, then we set the exit code to zero. If not, we set the exit code to one. Pretty straightforward. Install OS packages. Normally we would expect a pre-install package but because this isn't a certified version, then we have to install all the packages longhand and then remove the contents of the cache at the end. And the most important point is the start script. This is the one that does all the work. So the first thing we've got is a function called graceful shutdown that's going to do a DB shut. That's how we're going to tell the database to turn off. And we're going to associate that with a few signals. I'm going to explain this fixed config function a little later, so let's just jump that for the moment. So as far as the networking scripts are concerned, I test to see if the listener.r is present. If it isn't, I know that this is the first time in and I need to build it, so I just cat out the right contents for the TNS names.ora, listener.ora and sqlnet.ora. The next thing I do is test to see if the data files directory under UO2 is present. 
Remember, if I've used persistent storage, then I'd expect that to be there even on a fresh container. So we test to see if it's there. If it isn't, we start the listener and then we use the DBCA to do a silent creation of the database. I then just set some parameters. So using Oracle Managed Files, saving the state of the pluggable database and just telling it where the listener is. Then I'm going to shut down the database and make a new directory for the persistent config. I'm then going to flip the flag of the ETC Aura tab and keep a copy of it in my persistent storage. Now this is the important bit. Because the storage is ephemeral, it means that if I remove the container, I would lose all the storage as well. So what I'm doing is copying anything that's important as well as the data files, all the config files in the Oracle home, the Diag directory, SP file, etc. I'm copying all of those into the persistent storage and then running fixed config. So let's jump back up and have a look at that fixed config and see what it's doing. So here it's taking a copy of the ETC Aura tab and putting it back in position. Then it's testing each of the directories and config files that we pulled onto the persistent storage. If it's not present, it creates a symbolic link to the location on the persistent storage. This way, it looks like it's in the proper position, but actually all of the important stuff is sitting on persistent storage. So when I call fix config, it's just making sure that it looks like everything's in the correct location, even though it's on the persistent storage. So let's jump back to that. So we've got the point where we moved everything, we call fix config to do the symbolic links back, and then we start the database. I typically have Apex installed on everything, but I've got a flag here. If it's set to true, then I create a table space, install Apex, set the administration password, and run the Apex REST config. And that's it. If the database were present already, I'd run fix config and then just do db start and that's it. So I end the file with a tail of the alert log that I wait on forever. If that were to die, the container would stop. So this is pretty simple. What we've got in the build phase is just the software only install. What we've got on first startup is to create the database if it doesn't already exist and then subsequent startups just start the database. We have data files created in the persistent storage directly and we have any important config files symbolic linked to the right position from the persistent storage. Let's have a look at building the image and then running a container based on it. This footage is speeded up so you haven't got to wait for everything to happen in real time. First we'll look at the build phase. I navigate to the directory with the docker file and if I use the tree command I can see the directory structure and that includes the software under the software directory. We've issued the docker build command with the minus t option so we can specify a name for the image produced. The no cache option is just so that we don't use any cached layers and the dot at the end signifies where the docker file is, the current directory. So once we issue the command, the first thing we have to do is load everything into the build context. That's going to be a lot of software. We've got over 3 gig in this case. We can see this is built on top of the Oracle 8 slim image. We do the environment variable settings, copy the software into location, and we do all the operating system binaries and libraries. We switch to the Oracle user, unzip the software into the Oracle home, and then perform the silent install. We unzip the new version of the Apex software, run the root scripts, and then the build finishes. We can see the volume we defined, the ports we exposed, and then the health check and the start script. So that's the build phase complete. We have an image with Oracle software installed in it, but as yet no database. Let's create a new container using this image. Here's the docker run command we're going to use. We're naming the container OL819CON. 
We're mapping the host to container relationship for the ports. In this case, we're making them match. So the host ports match those listening inside the container. We're mounting a directory on the host machine into the UO2 mount point inside the container. Remember, UO2 was defined as a volume. I'm overriding one of the environment variables. I'm actually setting it to the same value, but this is just to show you how you'd do that. And I'm saying that this container is built on the image we just built. So that's the container created. But remember, the first time we run the container, it's got to build the database. So this is going to take some time. We can see what's going on by looking at the log file using this command, which is similar to tail minus F. So after setting up the listener config files, we jump straight into the database creation. Once the database is created, we go through the Apex installation. Once that's complete, we'd just be watching the tail of the alert log indefinitely, so I've cancelled the docker logs command. So that's it, a simple docker image build, then running a container based on that image. We'll use this image again in a later video. Thanks for watching. As always, there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.